Oh, good morning, church. Just before I get underway, this morning, our brother, Adara, came into the church early this morning. And he, um, he shared with me, and we're going to pray for him. He shared with me that last Monday, he lost his father back in Sri Lanka. And so I want us just to hold out our hands to, um, to Adara. He's just in the back there at the moment. I just want you to, if you can, just place your hands that way. We're going to pray for Adara and his family right now. Uh, we just love you, uh, and thank you for coming to the church for prayer. Father, we lift up Udara. Lord Jesus, in your name, we pray right now for comfort to come in a mighty way that he would feel the presence of your Holy Spirit right now, that there would be an assurity in his heart that all his needs and his family's needs and his extended family's needs are met by the loving arms of your very real Father in heaven. In your awesome and mighty name, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. It's times like this, the church is very powerful. We, we stand together. We love, don't we? We love because he first loved us. Amen. Oh, what a, what a beautiful room full of beautiful people, huh? This is a, this is a good day. Oh, I want to speak to us today. I actually want to start a series on the right wisdom. I want to speak about wisdom over the next five weeks with us here at Wyndham City Church and if you're watching online. You see, a couple of weeks ago, I shared on a message about sharing the gospel and how Paul said that when he came to the Corinthians, that he came not with a clever or wise sounding word, but with a, a, a message that just had the demonstration of the gospel, the demonstration of God's reality. And he says he brought it because the gospel does sound foolish to some people. To the world, the gospel can sound foolish. And so I shared from 1 Corinthians at the beginning of chapter 2. But if you read on, right, the very next thing that he starts to share is about the wisdom that is found in Jesus Christ. Christ. And it's a very different wisdom to the world. And so I want to bring us a message today specifically about how to get God's wisdom and why we need His wisdom as the wisdom for our lives. And so we're going to start a series. And this is actually what Paul says straight after he shares about how the gospel sounds foolish to the world. And this is what he says in 1 Corinthians 2, 6 to, seven, uh, 6 to 10, listen to the words now that we know that he's about to be speaking about wisdom, okay? He says, yet among the mature, we do impart wisdom. Although it is not a wisdom of this age or of the rulers of this age who are doomed to pass away, but we impart a secret and hidden wisdom of God, which God dec decreed before the ages for our glory. Wow. There's wisdom he had, he planned before humanity existed for us. This is big. None, I love this, none of the rulers of this age understood this. For if they had, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. They wouldn't have crucified Jesus. But as it is written, what no eye has seen, nor ear has heard, nor the heart of man imagined what God has prepared for those who love him. These things God has revealed to us through the Spirit. For the Spirit searches everything, even the depths of God. That's the scripture I'm going to be looking at this morning. And I'm going to break that down so that we can see how, one, how we can get God's wisdom, but two, why. Why we need His wisdom above all other kinds of wisdom. And it's a five-part series starting today on the right kind of wisdom. That's what it is today, the right kind of wisdom. So let's look at why we need God's wisdom. The very first part of this scripture, 1 Corinthians 2, 6-7 says, Yet among the mature, so among those who are now Christians and have, are, are gleaning from God, really, not they've, they've gone on beyond just believing, but now they're at the stage they're actually wanting to listen 
to what Jesus has to say. You see? You see there's a transition there. They're coming into maturity. I used to, I've always been my dad's son, but there was a day that I, I started to listen to him, and he's like, oh, good, my son is finally starting to grow up, right? Yeah. So there's a maturity. He goes, yet among the mature, we do impart wisdom. Although it is not a wisdom of this age or of the rulers of this age, who are doomed to pass away. That's important. But we impart a secret and hidden wisdom of God, which God decreed before the ages for our glory. Here it is. There is a wisdom, right, that people can get that's just for now. All right. I I like to think of it as being street smart or being savvy. You know, who likes to be savvy? You know what being street smart or having wisdom for the time now means? It's good. And I'm not saying don't get it, by the way. But really, what it's saying is you can have wisdom that is applicable for you figuring out what you want to achieve. And then you start to look at the systems that have been created in the world. You look at the environments that are in the world. You look at the people you need to be around or be influenced by to get to achieve your goal. You look at the world that exists now and you start thinking about how I need to act, what I need to do, what kind of wisdom is required to get to where I want to get to. That's kind of like, that's the wisdom that the world has. There's a lot of smart people in the world. We know that because there are massive buildings, there's massive cities. There's obviously so much wealth circulating in the world. So this comes about by people realizing how to obtain and acquire things. That is well and good, right? But the problem is that once you die, well, everything that you acquired, everything you had wisdom for to achieve was only good for the time while you were alive. It has an expiry date on it. Its wisdom really is limited to your life now. And it's actually only for your life now because what people needed to be wise about back in the 50s is not what they need to be wise about now. I'm already at that stage. I grew up when iPads come through. But boy, when I was a chaplain and working in youth ministry, how many times I'd go to the kids to say, how do you do this? Because our world is rapidly changing. So you need to be up to date with your wisdom that's applicable only for now. However, what Paul is saying is that there is a wisdom, right, that is not based about being temporary. There is a wisdom that doesn't just fulfill you for now. It's so much greater than that. See, the world gives you wisdom for what you need now. But God gives you wisdom for what you need for being a human being. Boom. If I was a rapper, I'd drop the mic. The simple fact that we are human beings means that we need to know what it is we need to know about human beings. We need to know how we operate, the things that are necessary for us, the way we think, the way we we deal with one another. All of this, we need to have that kind of wisdom. And the Bible says that God created us. He cleverly and very intricately and fearfully created us. I love the fact that the psalmist says in 139.14 that I praise you because I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. I love this because the reality is there is so much fear in pressing the play button on complete and utter control. We as human beings have been given complete and utter control of our own lives. Yes, at times, obviously, some people may come in and try and take that away from us, but that's because they've been given the same amount of free will. Everyone has free will. They can do what they, there's a massive debate in the world at the moment about do we allow artificial intelligence? I love a good sci-fi movie. And there's so many of them about, you know, the doom that comes after or the fear that can, can happen. If we press play on a computer-based program that has complete freedom to do whatever they want with the world, there's fear that comes with that. God knew very well what he was doing when he said, okay, you have it, free will. This is why we're so different to every other creature. 
God fearfully said, oh, man, okay, I love you so much. I don't want you to be a robot. And he gave us free will. And from that moment on, we have been a, a creation that has been allowed to make our own decisions. But coming from this, right, it says that before he made us, before the ages of our glory, there was wisdom. I love it. You know what? Before you make something, you need to know why you're going to make it. There was so much wisdom that God had when he intricately put us together and the tissues and the, the everything about us. Not blowing your nose tissues, obviously. That's actually wisdom to use them when you need a sneeze. But anyway, look, the point is, he says, because we are human beings, God knew what he was going to allow us to have, and he knew how he was going to make us. So he has wisdom that's for us. Does anyone have, does anyone work with the computer in this room? Yeah, like a lot of people, there's, there's three people. All right, that's cool. All right, in this room, three people work with computers. Well, well let's make it four, because I know I do. And the reality is the day that I got a computer, something happened. I then needed an IT guy. Does anyone have an IT guy in their work? Yeah, about about the four people that put their hands up? Yeah, the moment we have a computer, we need to have someone in our lives who knows about computers. I start to learn about computers, but there's so much more that I need to know. And I ring up the computer guy here for the church and the school, and I'm like, yo, Chris, because his name's Chris too, because it's cool and wise to have a name called Chris. All right, amen to all the Chris's out there. And I'm like, Chris, man, there's something wrong with my computer. And he's like, no problem, I'll fix it. He comes over. Because he understands it, he fixes it. He's got wisdom about it that I don't know. God has the wisdom about being who we are. And this is why we need God's wisdom. It's wisdom for simply being a person. Oh, I love. It's wisdom that will never matter the generation you live in. This is big. All right, look what Paul says next. It's very profound. Actually, when, when I read this next verse and I, and I got it, I was like, oh, snap, that applies to me. So let's, let's read it because it actually is just common sense. In 1 Corinthians 2, 8, Paul continues. He says, none of the rulers of this age understood this. For if they had, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. I've looked at that verse so many times, but when I realized that, that Paul is speaking about wisdom, he's like saying, hey, you know what? Obviously, none of the people who are ruling at the time when Jesus was there, so the Roman authorities and the Jewish councils, they obviously did not see God's wisdom because they crucified Jesus. But if you listen to what Jesus is saying, right, there is complete and utter wisdom all the way. He speaks, if you want to know how to be the best person, if you want to know, he's speaking about forgiveness and what it does, love, patience, kindness, He's speaking about how to have the right type of relationships. Everything he speaks about will bring health into a marriage. You know, if you actually look at what Jesus teaches, you'll start to realize, oh my goodness, that's about being the best type of human being. If anyone saw that, they'd be like, no, 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 let's let's not kill him. Uh, Actually, I want to spend a couple more Tuesdays with this guy. Do you know, because they could not see the wisdom that he absolutely had. And yet there are people, these people, sorry, and yet these people, these authorities and these councils were the ones who were making the rules. They were governing the people and they rejected Jesus Christ. These are the ones who are saying, this is what you can do. This is what you can't do. This is the way you should live and this is the way you shouldn't live. And yet they were the ones who were looking at Jesus and saying, we got to get rid of this guy. Oh my goodness, no. Because everything he was saying, maybe I'm speaking too loud. I'm sorry. (laughs) As the baby leaves the room. Okay, I'll act with wisdom and I'll bring it down a notch. He was the one who had the wisdom. But the rulers of the time didn't see it. In fact, there's so many people who ruled the world who didn't have it. And this is crazy, right? Because how many patents or how many things that we do in our life, 
how many, how many ways that we conduct ourselves or what we think is appropriate to say or do or how we live have actually come from people who don't want anything to do with Jesus. And yet Jesus is the one who's going to make your marriage successful. If you read his words, boy, you're going to have a good relationship with your dad, with your mom, the right people. Know how to love people who you need to keep just away from their influences. He's got so much wisdom. And yet the people who are the one, there's so many people. You, you get what I'm saying. There's so, there, we do so much. And I just realized as I'm reading this, I'm like, oh yeah, I sit down and watch movies. And sometimes I'm like, there's no way that director or writer believes Jesus. And so what kind of influence is coming into my life if I do this? You know, you know what I'm saying? Like, how much do we, what kind of wisdom, what kind of instructions do we want to be following in our life? It's obvious we want God's instructions. When you realize that what Jesus says, what God has revealed in his word is absolute wisdom for all generations. Oh, my favorite thing at youth used to be when I'd hear a kid at the beginning of the year say, oh, the Bible's irrelevant. And then they'd be hanging out with me later in the year and they're telling me about a crazy thing that happened in their life and they're sad that they wish they never did. And then I'm like, oh, by the way, let me just show you this in the Bible. And then, and then I'll be like, oh, yeah, kind of re relevant, right? And then they're like, yeah, I wish I knew that at the beginning of the year. The Bible is forever relevant. There is no one who, who will ever live that the Bible will not be able to give wisdom to. If they had seen Jesus... They would have known he was wise and they wouldn't have wanted to kill him. And yet people were following these people. Wow. Who is gleaning, who's gleaning from or following patterns made by people who've actually said, oh, oh, you believe in Jesus? Oh, you believe that kind of stuff? Let's make sure that we're awake to who and what kind of wisdom we're going after. This is why I want to do a series on wisdom. So over the next few weeks, I can start drawing out what is wise from God. Paul is saying here to the Corinthians, are we following any wisdom given by people who have rejected Jesus Christ? Because where is that wisdom coming from? Paul says this in 1 Corinthians 2.7. I love it. We declare God's wisdom. This is what Paul's saying to the Corinthians. Just letting you know, we declare God's wisdom, a mystery that has been hidden and that God destined for our glory before time began. Oh boy, there is a massive problem with this scripture. Does anyone, did anyone hear? Let me say it again. We declare God's mystery. Sorry, we declare God's wisdom a mystery. It's hidden. <laughs> He's saying that we are declaring something that the world can't see. That's a massive problem. You know, you're looking for something, but you can't find it. You're still obviously in the problem, right? Like, it's not hidden here. This is not hidden that God's wisdom is hidden. What Paul is saying is that there is wisdom that's absolutely and utterly available and there for you, all right? But you can't obtain it without God. You can't obtain this kind of wisdom without God because if you could, you wouldn't need God. But obviously, the ones who think they're wise are crucifying Jesus. So it is literally hidden from people's eyes. And this is why Jesus and the Bible declared that we were fearfully made, because he's always given us free will. The only way we can really find out the hidden things is if we want God, because then you'll go to God for what is wise. This is crazy. I love it. For those who want it, there is a way to get it. Oh, we're so fearfully and wonderfully made. And if you want God's wisdom, there is a way to get God's wisdom. It's right here. 1 Corinthians 2, 9, 10. However, as it is written, what no eye has seen, what no ear has heard, and what no human mind has conceived, the things that God has prepared for those who love him. This is is a very profound piece of Scripture. Paul's quoting something from past. This was said of days to come, 
that there is a time that what no eye seen, no what no ear has heard, no what my, mind can conceive, the things that God has planned. He's talking about the wisdom that God's planned for us, for those who love Him. Because if you love someone, you'll go hang out with that person. And then that person will be able to impart wisdom, time, energy, life, because they've been enabled to do it by the person going to them. Now, I used to think, this is, this is great. See, this scripture, when I became a Christian, I had a Christian friend who sent me a card saying, hey, welcome, you're a Christian, that's awesome. And then they sent me this scripture on the card. Well, it was written on the card. And I used to look at it, and I'd be going, oh, that's really cool. This is an encouraging scripture about the things that God has for me for the future. That's what I thought. I've always just thought that this scripture means that God has good things for my future. By the way, he totally did. And that is true. And that's what it does. It encourages you. Little did I know that Eve was coming my way. And this church as well. So much good has come. But the revelation of this scripture is so much deeper when you understand that he's speaking about wisdom. He's literally saying that what no eye can see. What, what you can't use, you can't get the wisdom from God by your biological eye. You can't see the Holy Spirit with your biological eye unless He reveals it to you. And guess what? That's still the work of the Holy Spirit. You can't hear the wisdom that God has for you because it comes by the Spirit. See, He says, I love it, these are the things God has revealed to us by His Spirit. Who, are, who wants to throw out God's Spirit? Wow, no. No way, no way. When my dad said, find a church, Chris, you need one. He said, make sure you go to a spirit-filled church. Exact words that my dad used. Boy, did he give me the best wisdom ever. Because in that place were people who had the Holy Spirit in them. They were filled with the Holy Spirit. So when they spoke to me, it was different. And it was wisdom. These are the things that God has revealed to us by His Spirit. The Spirit searches all things, even the depths of of God, even the deep things of God. And one translation says, even the mind, the mind of God. How, how much do we need the Holy Spirit living in us? I love it. I love this scripture so much because now I realize that Paul's saying, he goes, there is wisdom available that you can't read about with your, with your eyes, right? It, has, it comes through the Holy Spirit. You can't hear this wisdom because it comes through the Holy The Spirit is what, if, think of it this way, all right? If I send Isaiah an email, all right? I'm sending him an email, right? The only way that Isaiah is going to be able to see that email is if he has a computer or a device that can read an email. And, and, then, and then on top of that, then he needs to start the computer up. You've got to start it up, man. You, you can't read my email. I know you've got a computer. You can't start it unless, you know what? The Holy Spirit is the agent. God sends the message through the Holy Spirit. If you've got the Holy Spirit, you can receive God's messages. But then you've got to be spending time alive, open with the Holy Spirit. You've got to open that computer up. You've got to press start. You've got to open Outlook or Google. Gmail, and you've got to be like, oh, there it is, cool. Oh, yeah, I could get it. It's in English now, or whatever language you speak. We have to have the Holy Spirit, but there's so much shunning of the Holy Spirit. Oh, boy, don't do that. Not that we do. <laughs> we don't do that here. But you know what I'm saying? Like, we can go the whole week before we get to Sunday. And God's been wanting to speak to us on Monday, Tuesday, every day. Wow, we need his spirit, so that we can get the right wisdom. And it's something that we can only get if we want it, because he gave us free will. Now, let me clarify. I'm definitely not saying that we cut people off who don't believe in Jesus. I'm not saying that, right? There's a lot of wisdom that's God's wisdom that has traveled down the line because Christianity has been around for a very long time, and so is, so is the Bible. So people have caught wisdom that may not know Jesus personally, and they can share to you. So I'm definitely not saying, hey, because we're a Christian and we have now access, you know, to like the Father because we've got the Holy Spirit, we don't, we don't be arrogant to people. And that's not what I'm talking about. And I'm not saying we cut people off. But here's the beautiful thing. <laughs> you see, because Paul goes on to say, oh, I didn't put the Scripture there. Dope. All right. He goes on to say that the things of the Spirit 
that the things from God are discernible only by the Spirit. So what he's saying is even when you have a friend who may not know Jesus Christ and they're giving you advice, you, you're, you're not just going to fluke. You're not going to by chance have to rely on by chance if that advice is good. Because if you've got the Holy Spirit inside, the Holy Spirit can then speak to you and discern and tell you if that advice still is good advice or good wisdom or not. You don't want to fluke life when you don't have to fluke life. We can have the Holy Spirit speaking alive in us. This is, you know why, church, this is why I love link groups. We, you know, or you may know them as church groups at home church and things like this. There is something that is crazy that happens when you come together as groups of believers and you start speaking to them. You start pulling apart a scripture. You're hanging out, having tea and coffee, and then you're all talking about the Bible. And then you're like wanting to know from God, and then you start praising God. And every time I'm in a group of believers where we've spent time praising God, without fail, someone gets a word from heaven. That's for someone or all of us in the group. There is such power in spending time with people who know the Holy Spirit and have Him and they know Jesus personally. You have to make sure that your lifeline's connected to the source. Every week we should be getting together or fortnightly at least and just being able to spend time with people who are in connection. They got an email with heaven. You know, that's what I'm talking about. So, like, get involved. There is something that happens when we come together. This is the time when God is able to impart wisdom. That's how we get God's wisdom. We're not, we're not alone in this world. And we don't have to walk around and fluke it or just become so wise and wealthy because we figured out the times. And then we leave it to somebody else and hope they do a good job with it. We've got something that goes beyond the grave. And it's available for us every single day. If I can just get the band up. I want to I end with a story that really kind of highlights why we need wisdom. And as you can see, this is why I want to speak for the next five weeks. So this is the fifth. So we're going to be speaking for the next four weeks on wisdom that's coming from the Bible. That's come through time spent with the Holy Spirit that's specifically for you guys. I want a church that knows how to get God's wisdom. We want to be a part of that church. And so, so, so this is why, right? Because God is not limited, right? He's not limited in any way, shape or form or to any single person at all. Because the Bible says that he knows the thoughts of man. Now, this actually, this story that I'm going to share to you is just one of countless many that's happened in my time being a youth pastor at Kingston. But I remember one time I was, um, I don't know if I spoke or someone else spoke. And, and then after it, we have a time of prayer and all these kids come up. And then there was this one kid, a young guy who'd come into the life of the school, Heather and Christian College, attached to the church at the beginning of the year. It was a few months in. He'd come a few times and he comes forward for prayer. And so I'm just moving along the line, praying for the kids. And then suddenly I start praying with this kid. And then, boom, I just get this, oh, that's a very clear thought. There's problems between the father and the son. And the father has this attitude. The son has that attitude. And I just started saying, okay, okay, this is, what I'm, this is what's coming to me. If it's for you, take it. If it's not, just push it to the side. So I just start speaking. I start sharing what's coming to my mind as I'm praying. My mind is honestly, it's, I'm just wanting God to tell me what's for them. I, I don't want to muck around with people's lives. Okay? But I just start saying what's coming. And he's just pouring down tears, tears, tears. And then I'm like, look, if it's for you, you'll know it's for you. If it's not, feel free to just put it to the side. And then I moved on because there was so many more kids. And then afterwards, we, we close the night. We put the music up, lights on, fun stuff's happening. Kids are off playing games. I start packing up at the back of the sound desk. And then this kid who's quite timid and shy and he's just he's hovering there, you know, he's he's hovering. And then eventually he just he just goes, Chris. And I'm like, yeah. And he goes, How did you know that? And I'm like, how do I know what? He goes, what, what you told me. No one knows that. I haven't told anyone that, and I figured that out between me and dad. No one knows that. And I said to him, I said, I didn't know that. 
God showed me that to tell you for two reasons. One, so that you would know God is looking after you. He knows everything about you. And two, so that you would know he is really there. That God, that Jesus Christ really exists. And he became a Christian. And he's lived on and he's journeying with the Lord now as well. There is no mind that God doesn't know what's ticking on the inside. There's no business deal that you're about to shake hands with that God doesn't know the full intentions of the other person. Wow. There's no product that you're about to buy that God doesn't know the true quality of that product. There's so many times where I've heard the voice say, don't. Okay. Sorry. (laughs) There's so many pitfalls that I've fallen into that I've looked back and gone, man, actually, it actually says it really quite clear in the black and white there. There's so much wisdom that God has that's not limited, but has a great purpose to protect us, to thrive us, and to go on to achieve other stuff. And as we come to a close today, I want you to know that each week, as you come to the house of God, this isn't just Wyndham City Church, by the way, this is just the church. This is God's church. It's where He is. And if you come in here wanting God's wisdom and you want His Holy Spirit, His Holy Spirit will speak to you because He's given you free will and He's asked, draw near to me and I will draw near to you. That's not an empty word written in the Scripture five, six hundred years ago, whatever it is, 12, 2,400 years ago. It's real. Every time I draw near to Him, and if ever there's not an answer straight away, I have complete trust in God that the delay is for a reason, and then I find out why. God's wisdom is even in when He gives you wisdom. How good and how much do we need God's wisdom? So we're going we're gonna to pray. We're going to pray this. I want us to, um, we've got a song I want to sing. What have we got, Nat? What have we got? What are we going to sing? I want us to sing a song this morning. The heart of worship, yeah, mighty to save. Can we do mighty to save? All right, because God is mighty to save us from a lot of falls. <laughs> and, and there's something about saying that He is mighty to save. I want us to stand to our feet and I want us to praise God this morning. That's what we're going to end with, praising Him. But this, this area um, is, is quite wide now because for some reason the chairs got pushed back. But that's good because it means it's full and ready for anyone who wants to come for prayer this morning. And I'm going to pray for words from God. I'm going to pray for His wisdom. But I want us to, as a group also just to be praising Jesus because as we praise Jesus, He brings victories. Amen? Amen. Let's, let's start. Let's pray. This is open for you guys. That's the word for the week. And come hungry for wisdom. Amen.